Hi, my name is Aaron Parecki. Today, we're gonna to talk about everything that's new in the YOLO Box 3.0.0 update, right after I install it. I have a YouTube channel that talks all about live streaming. I do live streams every week, Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific, answering questions from the chat and talking about new gear and what's exciting in the world of live streaming. This video is focused on the updates for what is new in the version 3 update. This is not going to be a full overview of all of the features in the Yolo Box. If you're interested in the full overview of the Yolo Box Pro, check out the videos on my channel as well as on this Yolo Live channel. So let's dive into what is new in Yolo Box version 3. The video crop feature lets you create a new video source that is cropped in on any of your existing ones. So for example, I can take this side view turn off the keying, we'll go into the cropping tab, and here you can drag this around and change how much of it you wanna show. And if you press fit to screen, then when you save it, you can save it as a new source and it will be a zoomed in version of the video. So here's the original video and here's the cropped in version. One of the things you can do with this is to get rid of the little black borders on the side of the picture if your green screen doesn't actually cover your entire camera angle. So for example, I've got these little black strips right now because my camera is not zoomed in enough. So I can go ahead and click on the little icon in the corner, turn on chroma keying, let's give it a background so we can really see what's going on here. And now see how I've got these little black borders on the sides. So I can go into the crop menu, do a custom ratio, go full height, and then make the width just wide enough to see myself, but to crop out the black borders. We'll go ahead and edit the original video for this. And now I've got a nice clean green screen in the Ola box. Another new feature is to be able to name your graphic overlays. This is really great because as you can tell, when your artwork is kind of small, it can be difficult to distinguish the difference between these just from the thumbnail. So now we've got nice names here so you can very clearly see which is which. If you had any previous overlays created, they won't have a name, but you can go ahead and edit them to add a name. You just type a name up here, and now when you save it, the name appears on the list. Another really useful addition to the overlays is the ability to lock an overlay to a particular video source. So what that means is if you have a lower third created for somebody's name, you can make it always appear on top of their video. Let's go ahead and set that up here. So we can start by clicking on my video to bring that to the program, long press on this, press the lock, and now it will appear over the top. So when I switch away, the overlay goes away. And when I switch back to myself over here, the overlay appears. And this is just a really quick way to make sure that the overlays will always appear on the right video without you having to go separately press the overlay. One of my favorite new features is that now all of your live stream settings are saved when you exit the app. To show you what I mean, let me go ahead and set up a few more sources on here. I'm gonna add a side-by-side -side view, for example. We'll go ahead and do this, create this view just the way I want it. Let's go ahead and use a background image. Let's get rid of the borders and we can choose what size these are. Let's make it look like that. It's one of my favorite layouts where you got the person smaller cropped and a larger view of the screen or whatever you're sharing. We'll go ahead and click done. And that's of course now saved down here as an angle I can cut to. But if you remember previously when you would leave this and go back, all of your video sources would have been disappeared. Now they're restored. So I can go right back to my side-by-side -side layout without having to recreate it. And the same thing is now true if you duplicate an event. And the same thing is true if you duplicate an event. So if I click on the little three dots, press duplicate, just call it test again, very creative. Then if I open the new one, you can see that it has also restored all of my video sources. And again, I can get back to that side-by-side -side. and all of the overlays come with it as well. Another great new feature is that all of your multi views can now have video backgrounds. So let's go ahead and make another side by side view, choosing the two video sources here. And now in the background, notice that this icon actually has a little eight seconds on it. And if I choose that, it's an eight second animation for the background. So I'll go ahead and again, slide this over to this layout. And we can also add other videos from the SD card. So by default, it gives me the list of all the images on the card, but now I can also go tab into the videos and this is gonna load up all the videos I've saved on my SD card. You can now go browse various stock websites to find video clips that are good for backgrounds. Let's go and choose this little red and blue neon rays, choose that one, and now that's looping in the background. So go ahead and click done, save that, 
And now this side-by-side -side view shows the little looping background with the lasers. That's pretty fun. This lets you add a nice professional touch to your live streams. Another update that I know a lot of people have been asking for is the ability to have all the comments from all the different platforms appear in one tab. So once you're live, your comments will appear over here. And now instead of having to tab between the different platforms, they'll all appear in an aggregated view. And if you want, you can still get back to the original view, which is separate tabs per platform. Another update that I'm really excited about is that your video playback can now be set to either pause or loop at the end of the video. So if I go add a new video source, let's grab a video from my SD card, say one of my drone videos. And now I'm going to go ahead and scroll over to the settings tab here. There's this new menu option called local videos play mode, and you can either set it to loop or stop at the last frame. I'll set mine to stop at the last frame and we can actually test this out. And now when I switch to the drone video, it'll start playing. It looks like it's about a minute and 14 long. So I'll fast forward this to the end of it. You can see the time right over my shoulder here. So this is great because now if you are playing back a video clip on your stream and when it ends, it won't just go loop back to the beginning again. So here we go. We've got five seconds left. And as I'm watching this, I'm going to let it stop. It's paused. It did not go back to the beginning. And now I can switch back to the main angle. There's a minor update to the chroma key settings as well. So if I go ahead and go into the settings for chroma keying, turn on chroma keying, now you can see these little numbers next to the similarity and smoothness. So if I wanted to change it, I can actually see the number so I could write it down if I know what value works well. And I can also make small changes by tapping the button here. In the side by side layout, you now get the option to add a border, including choosing a border color. So you can use this to add more custom branding to your live streams as well change the thickness, and change the border color. If you're bringing guests into a stream, when you go send them a link to join, they now get the option to type their name when they join the event. And importantly, that name then appears as the name of the video source in the Yolo box. So these are the new features in the Yolo box Pro version 3 update. The Yolo box Pro has been getting so many updates lately, it's really exciting to see. I want to talk about a few of my favorite updates from the last couple of months. The newest feature of saving all the video sources in your custom layouts is super great. That is probably my top feature out of all of these new features that were released in this batch. Honestly, it's going to save me a lot of time because I usually do the same kinds of shows repeatedly, so it's really useful to be able to not have to recreate all those layouts every time. Having these custom layouts saved between projects is a huge time saver. I'm really excited to see this. Now I can get the layout all set up exactly the way I want to, and it will always be there ready to go. Another really great addition in the last update is the ability to actually set the layer order for your different overlays. This is great because if you have multiple graphics that you might have overlapping on the screen, you can now choose what order they stack in. But I think it's actually version 1.9 from July that has a couple of my absolute favorite features. The ability to invite guests into your live stream is incredible. It usually takes quite a lot of work to do this in other kinds of systems, and it's just so easy with the Yola box. All you have to do is go tap on the little guest tab here, click on invite guests, and you can either send a link to yourself or have this email directly to your guests. They get a link they can open in their browser and they just join it like any video conferencing platform in their browser. And then their video source appears directly in the Yolo box. And now that your guests can enter their name, it's even easier to find them on your multi-view screen. The other feature I'm really excited about is what lets you do this layout. This was launched in July. What this lets you do is when you drag this slider, it changes from evenly sized to up. And if you go to the left, it'll start shrinking the one on the left. That lets you do this kind of person on the side and then a big version of the screen or whatever else you want to show larger. The one on the right stays in the 16 by nine aspect ratio and the one on the left will crop in. And this is really great for when you might have a presenter with their slides, which are 16 by nine, and you want to show their face next to it. You want to crop their face because you don't care about the background behind them, but you don't want to crop their slides. And again, it's super cool to see this in the Yolo box because there aren't that many other things that can even do this. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to me on YouTube. My name is Aaron Parecki, and you can find a link to my channel down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.